today we are going to talk about the norovirus and the outdoors. Whether it is you're backpacking or you're day hiking or you're just simply traveling on the road. What you need to know about how it starts, how it spread, and how you can prevent it from happening. Last year when I was hiking on the Appalachian Trail, I was completely, completely and utterly surprised, mostly alarmed by how quick and how rapidly the norovirus strain just kind of took over the trail and took over everybody's hike. I couldn't believe the amount of people that both indirectly and directly were affected in my bubble. So what is the norovirus? Norovirus is simply a virus very similar to the flu, only it's gastrointestinal. It affects 21 million people per year. The trail is no different. However, it's mostly contracted by hand to hand to mouth contact. So when you're out in the wilderness, think privy, bear cables, sharing of utensils and food and digging in each other's bags and then directly putting that into your mouth. Fact number three, it only takes 100 particles to make you sick. There are over thousands, thousands of particles in one given cell. Not everyone who is infected with the norovirus actually shows symptoms of being sick. You can be a carrier only and still infect others around you without being sick yourself. A virus can stay active up to two full days. It's two full days on an inanimate object and you can pass that virus along. It doesn't die for two whole days, seriously. The virus is sped, spread through your GI tract, so AKA poop. So you can be pooping out this virus from 24 to 48 hours after all of your symptoms have gone away. So once you're all healed, you're hiking again, you can still be passing that virus actively, shedding it through your poop. The thing is that most people don't know, you can be shedding that poop for up to four months after you're all well. The norovirus often sees major outbreaks around winter and early spring. Why is this? Because your immunity is often lower during this time frame. When is hiking season? Early spring. So you do the math. Look, knowledge is everything, let's face it. The more you know about how noro is going to spread, the easier it is for you to understand how to prevent it. If you think that every single hiker or backpacker is out there practicing sanitary you know, conditions when it comes to pooping in the woods, you have it all wrong. If you think that everybody out there is practicing you know, basic hygiene at the, the lowest level, you are so very incorrect. And that is how it is spreading. So let's take a, an average day on the trail. You're hiking, whether you're backpacking or you're day hiking or you're just taking a gander through the woods. You hit a shelter. They're everywhere out there. On the Appalachian Trail, they're about every seven miles. So you hit a shelter and you have to go to the bathroom. You go and you use the privy. Well, there's a lot of poop being added into those privies on a daily basis, especially if you're talking about the Appalachian Trail during through hiker season. That cannot be cleaned, the poop cannot be cleaned fast enough. So all of a sudden, the amount of people pooping in this privy is like trifold. And so where are they going? They're not going in the privy, they're going around the shelter. They're going around the area. They're expanding that privy to other areas around. Your dogs are going to dig that up. All the dogs out on the trail are going to dig that up. Um, humans are not practicing leave no trace. They're not digging their hole properly. You've got wildlife digging it up. And all of a sudden, that, that privy section that is now just a little bit wider than the privy itself is now growing to this enormous scale of poop being sh you know, s scattered all over the trail. All right, so you poop. You use hand sanitizer. Well, I hate to break it to you guys, but hand sanitizer is not gonna cut it. I'm gonna tell you what will coming up. 
So you go and you dig into your nut, you know, your your granola bag, or you have to, you know, you're done with dinner for the night, and so you're hanging your food bag. Well, all of a sudden, those particles, those those particles that have have been already infected with norovirus, are now being spread to your utensils, to the you know, um, the surrounding area, the, the, um, you know, the, the picnic table, um, you're sharing food back and forth. You're handing people things, you know, to, to share. Um, you're touching the bear cables and all of a sudden what was just in the poop is now spread to the entire shelter. So the timing was rather ironic, but Emory University here in Atlanta, Georgia had asked me to be part of a norovirus study so they could understand exactly how many particles and what it took to get a human sick from the norovirus. I instantly was like, absolutely count me in. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps I'm the crazy one, but I, I was very excited to be part of their study. So I said, yes. And it was approximately a week long study where I was hospitalized. Um, you know, I was definitely in this program um, and I was, going to, I was going to get sick. What I knew I would learn from it is exactly how and what your body goes through when you're doing it. And yes, I got sick. Yes, I got the norovirus. Yes, it was rough. It sucked. It was awful for about 24 hours and that was it and what I learned and what was the most eye-opening thing for me was how quickly I contracted the norovirus how quickly I got sick from you know drinking the virus itself and here's the thing when you're out on the trail when you're backpacking when you're day hiking you don't know that you're getting sick with the norovirus. You don't know that you're contracting it. It just happens and it just very abruptly affects you. And though I was in a controlled environment and I had a target range idea of about approximately what time I was going to get sick, there was absolutely no warning signs whatsoever that I, that I had actually received it. It just, it bam, all of a sudden it hit me and it hit me hard and it hit me fast without little, little warning whatsoever. And when I was in a controlled environment, I was miserable. I was miserable for 12 hours. I was, I, I it was like constant. It was, you know, I, I had, I, I was so uncomfortable. I was discomforting. I was getting dehydrated. And when you're out there, you're not in such a controlled environment. You're not always going to have a flush toilet. You're not always going to have endless amounts of hydration offered to you. And it was really eye-opening to see the effects of how this can only grow from, you know, you're sick out on the trail, but but also the effects of of there's not a sanitary place to dispose of your sickness and how quickly that in turn goes into spreading it further and further and further and further and so you may not be able to get to a secluded area in the woods you may not be able to dig your cat hole six inches deep and that is what's affecting the spreading of this norovirus at such a rapid rate when you're out there. And so I guess you're probably wondering exactly how you can prevent it, huh? Well, I'll tell you, number one myth, anything but soap and water is not sufficient to kill the virus. Not hand sanitizer, not gloves of hand sanitizer, but soap and water. Another thing is bleach wipes. Yeah, I said it, bleach wipes. This is what you're looking for, bleach. Now they sell them in smaller mini packs that we will put the link down below so you can access it. But if you don't have the ability to get that, go out and get yourself bleach wipes. You can put these in a Ziploc bag and keep them moist, keep them user-friendly. 
If you wipe down the privy seat, if you wipe down the bear cable, if you wipe your hands very quickly with this after you've touched the trail guidebook, anything that you can do to keep yourself from getting sick. Bleach is the only thing 100% effective in killing norovirus. Another way to stop the norovirus from spreading to others is as a Leave No Trace trainer, I am big on this. Go far away from your campsite. Go far away from the AT shelters. Go far away from the privies if you need to. But dig your proper cat hole. We just did a video last week on the best type of toilet paper to use in the backcountry. So take a look at that video if you haven't already. Properly dig your hole, use the restroom, and wash your hands with soap and water after. Don't be sharing utensils. Don't dig your hand in somebody else's bag of food. Anytime you are sharing something with another fellow hiker, especially during norovirus season, be sure to wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water afterwards. And especially during the spring season of hiking, it's a good idea to just maybe do the elbow bump with a fellow hiker instead of shaking their hands. Another thing is do not poop by creeks or streams. You need to go far away from those water sources. If you think that you cannot catch the norovirus by drinking water, you're wrong. I did. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Go ahead and share this video. Get the word out, especially during this hiking season. Um, it is important for everybody to know the truth about norovirus. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a huge thumbs up and keep subscribing to our channel. <laughs> Sorry, hold on, give me a second. <laughs> Today we are talking about the norovirus. Um, one more time. Don't, don't stop it. <laughs>